channeling can be very mysterious to many of us who are going through a spiritual awakening. It can entice strong feelings of fear just as much as it can excitement. So today I'm going to be going over the most important tips to keep in mind when a person is channeling. What many of us are not aware of is that every single person is already a channel and channels, whether they're aware of that or not. This is because everyone is source incarnate. And as source incarnate, it is our natural state to be a conduit and to receive information from what we could look at as like our higher aspects of self. But being a conduit and having the capacity to receive information from outside of ourselves is simply not enough when it comes to being a clear and a conscious channel. Because a clear and a conscious channel is to be able to know thyself. This means that we're aware that messages that we're receiving can be filtered through our ego our trauma, our wounds, our hopes, our expectations, our belief systems. And so in order to be a clear channel, shadow work is the most foundational and important aspect for the ability to receive and transmit accurate information and clear messages. So the most vital and foundational step when it comes to channeling is to know thyself. Because only when we know thyself Will we be a frequency match to beings who are giving us beneficial and clear information? When we don't know ourselves, we're going to get all sorts of information and it's going to come from disincarnate spirits. It's going to come from ghosts claiming to be ascended masters. It's going to come from negative entities who are portraying themselves as benevolent entities. All these different manifestations of us not knowing ourselves or us coming from our ego's ability to be excited that, oh, we're even connecting with beings in the first place. So even having those low standards are making us a frequency match to low quality experiences in the astral or with any type of being who does not have our best interest in, at heart. So it's absolutely important that as a conduit, we clear our channel by healing our internal blockages to be able to receive information and to be able to look within ourselves because as within, so without. We're not gonna be a frequency match to beneficial information if as within, has a bunch of egoic blocks that have yet to be resolved and a bunch of unresolved traumas. So when we're able to look within and to truly know thyself, what that does is that places our frequency in a better position to have a external signal, let's call it, where the external signal is picking up what we're putting down and we're now able to connect with them and be a frequency match all because we're able to look at ourselves. And all of this carries over to the second step of channeling, which is a law that I just made up right now. And that is, whatever we are not aware of within the self will be used against us in the court of the universe. And what this means is, is that our blind spots go into our channeling, go into our ability to receive and transmit information not just because we become a frequency match to negative entities that want to exploit our blind spots, but also because we won't be able to fully understand the messages and be able to interpret them if we're coming from so many blind spots that the message gets contorted through whatever we're not aware of within the self. Truly helpful, beneficial beings who wish to assist us will not be able to if we don't have a large enough bandwidth to be able to receive their messages. And having a large enough bandwidth in this case means being able to be objective enough to receive a message, even if it resides outside of our own belief system. So objectivity is one of the most crucial components when it comes to channeling, because otherwise, if we're too subjective to channel, we're just going to be channeling our own ego. Being as objective as one can makes a person a truly clear channel because that objectivity means that we're able to receive messages without judging them. Those judgments or those personal biases edit the messages. By the time we're done editing a message, it could be like a game of telephone where whatever was received will be nothing like what's transmitted because it went through so much of our subjectivity. Whatever personal biases, whatever our comfort zone was with delivering a message, all those types of things that can act as distorting a message and distorting a message. So it becomes a game of telephone because it's not even anything near what we received, all because we were subconsciously or unconsciously editing the message to make us comfortable with it. 
So objectivity is how we're able to truly receive and be a clear channel so that we're not just one channeling our ego, channeling negative entities who will tell us anything we want to hear or just receiving unbeneficial information because we distorted the message. The third step when it comes to channeling is having strong boundaries. Now I know that that sounds funny because boundaries can be looked at as editing or judging, but having strong boundaries gives us the discernment that we need in order to once again, link up with and connect with beneficial information from beneficial sources. And we can't do that if we don't have boundaries. When we don't have boundaries, we accidentally are coming from low self-esteem or very low quality standards because we're just letting anything come in and we're acting from a place of self-importance because we're going, something is connecting with me. And so we're gonna accidentally relay information from the false light because it's coming from entities that are portraying themselves as one way when really they're not and it's all when you track that root origin of where, why that happened in the first place is because we did not have firm boundaries to be able to check the energetic frequency, the energetic signature at the door of who we're letting in. And so having strong boundaries, as well as the paradox of this is being super objective and open, right? So you have to have a, a ability to be super objective on one hand, which means absolutely open to the message that you're receiving. You can't edit it. But then also that needs to be coupled with its complete opposite or what you could just consider its counterpart, which is firm boundaries. So even if we have a lack of boundaries in our personal life, that's going to seep into and be infused in the messages. In fact, a part of being able to tell a clear channel is how they handle everyday situations. If they have firm boundaries in their everyday life, the life that has nothing to do with channeling. So understanding the importance of having energetic boundaries is going to help us attract beneficial sources of information and even our own out of body team. But in addition to strengthening our psychic boundaries, being acutely aware of our own personal biases will create the greatest capacity for clarity when we channel because our own personal biases are going to determine who we line up with in the ether. If you hold a more negative worldview and are a through and through pessimist, then that acts as a psychic block and you will have an issue with comprehending and resonating with information that is not of a negative nature. So you will be able to receive negative messages and that is very useful, but that same attribute can also be the very problem that allows the messages to be contaminated by hostile beings who wish to infuse our collective psyche with their agendas. And the same goes in reverse. If you are overly positive in your worldview to the point where you spiritual bypass and call that holding a high vibration, then you will only resonate with information that confirms your positive bias. And that can also be used by hostile beings as a way to subdue their audience. So it's important to tune our conduit into neutrality to the best of our ability in order to avoid attracting information that is playing into our personal bias. In addition to this, we need to also look for what reward we are getting out of delivering a specific message because we may be interpreting a message with the subconscious agenda that we will gain some reward. If we are unconsciously concerned with delivering a message because we will gain followers, or because we will gain more popularity, or because we will gain more exposure, or for any personal reason, then it is very important that we are aware of this. It's okay for there to naturally be a reward that comes along with information. That is not a problem. The real issue is if that was our motive for delivering it. Becoming aware of personal reward will elevate your frequency into integrity, and that will line you up with the most beneficial sources of information. The fifth step to help with channeling is we have to make self-love a priority and a practice. The reason why we have to make self-love a priority is because when we do this, we're going to naturally take actions of a self-loving nature and those actions are going to be reflected into every region of our life. So they're going to seep into every part of our life and that is going to be reflected back in our vessel, which is the conduit. So our vessel is just as important as our ability to have a large bandwidth and to be able to know thyself. 
So for instance, if we love ourselves, we're gonna make certain food choices that care about the quality of the food we're eating, and that is gonna go into our channeling. That's gonna go into our vessel's ability to be a clear conduit. And then you take that and you apply that to all the different areas of your life. And if you're not being a self-loving person in all these different regions that you're doing inventory on, then you might discover that that's gonna be seeping in somehow into the channeling. So it's very important, just like making sure that we have strong boundaries, just like we're making sure that we know ourselves, and just like we're making sure that we're staying open and objective when we're receiving information, it's just as important to make self-loving choices on a daily basis and make self-loving actions that are reflected into the strength of our conduit and the clarity of our conduit. In addition to making sure that we're coming from the most objective space possible when we're channeling, it's also important that we're free of self-judgments. So judgments are gonna restrict our valve and our capacity. So it's not just our ability to receive information that goes against our personal biases. That is also super important for when we're receiving information. But also it's our own personal ability to handle how we receive the information. We might get startled by our own bodily sensations or by our own self perceptions or the way that we're acting when we're channeling. Now we don't have to go all crazy and to, you know, like start talking in a different voice or any of that stuff. Some people do, um, especially trans channels, trans channelers step aside. And when they step out of the way and they step out of themselves, an entity comes in and then they make all sorts of different, you know, like gestures, movements, and um, in particular, their voice changes or they sound, you know, <laughs> not like themselves. But that's not even necessary to be a trans channel in this age. We don't need to step out of our bodies the way that trans channelers do in order to channel. Although some people prefer to, and that's fine. But regardless, it's still very important for us to be able to not have any judgments from however we look when we're channeling because we're gonna get self-conscious that's gonna go into the channel. I want you to look at channeling like a giant soup. Everything goes into it. Everything gets infused into the soup. If, you're, if you don't have boundaries in your life, that goes into the soup. If you don't have self-love and you're not making self-loving choices and taking self-loving actions, that goes into the soup. If we don't have discernment, that really, really goes into the soup. If we don't have the ability to know thyself, that goes into the soup but also everything in reverse. So if we love ourselves, that goes into the soup. If we know thyself, that goes into the soup. The more aware we are, that goes into the soup. So everything that has to do with channeling is of a nature where we're infused in it, whether we like it or not, even if we're coming from a super objective space and a super blank space, right? A clear space it's we're still inherently a unique perception of source and so that uniqueness is the first distortion or the first filter so naturally we're going to naturally be put into the soup whether we like it or not or whether we try to or not but what this is all about is not trying to get infused into the soup but knowing that all of us is going to get infused into our own artwork which is the message or the channel so if we're infused naturally in our own ability to channel by simply being a conduit in and of itself and having a unique perception, then what we're really doing is not striving for absolute perfection or absolute clarity, but what we're doing is understanding to the best of our ability what clarity is for us and making sure that we're getting the clearest channel already knowing that we're a unique perception and by being a unique perception we're going to inherently go into the soup when it comes to channeling you will find that no one person does it the same exact way each person needs to use their own spiritual sovereignty and their own uniqueness to be able to express receive and transmit information in their own way and their own capacity. So even though there's an absolute objective quality that is super vital to be able to channel, there's also the subjectiveness of the fact that people use their own mechanisms, their own modalities, their own way to tap in to how they channel that's unique to them. And they're all valid. 
So what you will find though is, is that along your journey of connecting with either your higher self or higher aspects, different groups that you would wish to connect with that are giving you beneficial information, the closer you walk into the source of who you are channeling, once you merge or once you get into a certain degree of union with this source or these higher aspects, you will find that you, yourself, are simply channeling yourself, but only this time not necessarily coming from the wounded trauma of our past or coming from our ego. We're channeling our own higher knowing from ourselves or from our higher self, but now since there's no distance between us and our higher self, we can't even distinguish where the information is coming from. And this can be interpreted by many as feeling disconnected or not being able to feel our higher connection with our higher self or with our guides. When in reality, most of the time, when we can't feel our connection with our higher self or we feel disconnected from our guides, what's actually happening is a certain degree of merging has happened. And when you're merged with something, what you're really longing for is you can no longer feel the distance between you and that source. But not only can you not feel that distance anymore, that doesn't need to be interpreted as sadness or feeling disconnected. It's possible for the sensation of distance to dissipate until there's no longer an I channeling a they. There is only a unity tapping into itself. I hope this has helped bring you closer to the source. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time.